Welcome to this uh, lecture on transition metal organometallic chemistry from principles to applications. We have been discussing a very important and interesting topic over the last uh, few lectures and this is on transition metal carbonyl complexes. Transition metal carbonyl complexes are important with regard to their applications in chemical catalysis as well as in understanding other ligands in terms of their electron donating ability a, uh, these transition metal carbonyl complexes have been used. We have spoken about these applications of transition metal carbonyl complexes in details in our previous lecture. Now this uh, in the last lecture we have also looked at uh, the synthesis of uh, transition metal carbonyl complexes and looked also at the structure of these transition metal carbonyl complexes. Now, as far as the synthesis is concerned for transition metal carbonyl complexes what we had seen that several strategies are used uh, particularly of the ones that involve direct reaction of zero uh, metal in its zero oxidation state with carbon monoxide uh, making uh, this transition metal carbonyl complexes. The other method involve involves reducing transition metal salts. Uh, by a reducing agent in presence of uh, COs to produce transition metal carbonyl complexes. We have also looked at some of the structures of transition metal carbonyl complexes and what we saw that there is a wide diversity of structures that are seen for binary transition metal carbonyl complexes. And with that uh, discussion we are going to start today by looking at some of the structural features of these transition metal carbonyl complexes. Now what we had seen that transition metal carbonyl complexes for example uh, in uh, diosmium uh, 9 carbonyl there is a, a single uh, bridging in carbonyl whereas the same for the iron uh, there are 3 bridging carbonyl uh, uh, moieties and these were ascribed uh, to the small size of uh, iron as opposed to uh, the osmium leading to this uh, uh, the different uh, number of bridging carbonyl uh, moieties. So as far as the iron is concerned iron contains uh, 3 bridging carbonyls and osmium uh, contains a singly a bridged carbonyls. So the uh, reason for lesser number of bridging carbonyls in osmium has been attributed to uh, the bigger size of osmium as opposed to iron. So what we saw in osmium in our previous discussion that this has a single uh, bridging carbonyl whereas the iron has 3 and that has been ascribed uh, to uh, the bigger size of uh, osmium uh, to that of iron. Now continuing this discussion further we are going to uh, take a look at some interesting more binary carbonyl complexes uh, which shows different modes of uh, binding. For example, cobalt being a first row transition metal forms this cluster with CO4 of tetra cobalt carbonyl cluster and Each of these are cobalt has two terminal carbonyls and the bottom one has three
terminal carbonyls and then there are three bridging carbonyls. One, two, three. Now, this is an example of carbonyl bridging between two or metal center. Now, if one moves from cobalt to rhodium and here is this rhodium 6 cluster, of rhodium 6 cluster, each rhodium contains two terminal carbonyl and there are four triply bridging carbonyls which happens at this phase which has a triply bridging carbonyl this phase and the, the back phase of triply bridging carbonyl and this front phase of triple bridging carbonyl and this. So, this compound is a interesting one which contains carbonyl which are bridged to 3 rhodium and they are des designated as R H 6 C O 16 and this sort of represents R H 6 C O 12 with mu 3 CO 4 and these are mu 3 mu 3 mu 3 mu 3 carbonyls. So, we see a complex structure whereby there are terminal carbonyls and mu 3 bridging these are mu 2 types and terminal carbonyl. Now, when one goes from uh, cobalt to rhodium which is bigger in size, then from rhodium one goes to uh, iridium which is even uh, bigger in size, we see that uh, the formation of bridging car carbonyl is completely inhab uh, inhabited. So, here is a iridium 4 cluster. and each of the there is no bridging carbonyl at all and each of the iridium is bound to three a carbonyl moieties as is shown over here. So, uh, the take home message is that as size increases 
uh, the bridging tendency of carbonyl to bridge decreases with iridium complex with iridium being bigger in size no bridging bridging carbonyls in this. So, this is an interesting uh, example where we can see that as the size increases the number of bridging carbonyl decreases and also these example uphold the different kind of bridging carbonyls that are possible which is mu 2 type and uh, also it can go from mu 2 to mu 3 type. So, that uh, the bridging modes uh, as uh, seen in that uh, compound is that you can one can have a terminal carbonyl uh, which is uh, eta 1 terminal one can have a mu 2 doubly bridging or eta 2 and one can even have the mu 3 triply bridging where where as we saw in the rhodium uh, carbonyl cluster that this triple bridging uh, carbonyls uh, was also seen. Now, uh, these uh, also uh, sort of exposes uh, the kind of versatility that these uh, carbonyl compounds that they show. Furthermore, uh, there is another interesting feature that this doubly bridging carbonyl can sort of uh, exist as a uh, equilibrium between the terminal clusters. So, the equilibrium between the double bridging carbonyl as is drawn over here. So, and that can sort of be in uh, conjunction with uh, this or in equilibrium uh, with uh, this terminal ca carbonyl compounds as well. This is doubly bridging and eta 1 terminal and the perfect example of this is in this uh, dicobalt complex which sort of exhibits uh, which shows both kind of bridging in dynamic equilibrium in solution and that can be seen Uh, over here, where all the terminal carbonyls the structure containing terminal carbonyl is in equilibrium with the structure containing the bridging carbonyls. as is uh, shown over here. Now, 
the, these two structure are in dynamic remains in dynamic equilibrium. in solution. Now, one uh, and hence uh, one can see the uh, presence of both of the structure. Now, infrared spectroscopy is a excellent tool for monitoring or characterizing these modes of vibration and uh, they, uh, they would be different for uh, these uh, the terminal ones as opposed to the uh, bri uh, bridging ones. So, the bridging ones as well as the terminal ones, uh, they uh, uh, appear at distinct region. This one comes around around uh, 2000 uh, to 2100 centimeter inverse, uh, whereas this would come somewhere around uh, 1700 uh, to 1800 uh, centimeter inverse. So, there are distinct region where this uh, bridging and terminal carbonyl moieties appear and uh, from uh, looking at the CO stretching frequencies is for uh, this bond uh, one can ascertain uh, how many uh, kinds of bridging or how many uh, uh, terminal carbonyls are associated uh, with the structure uh, concerned. So, the take home message is the larger uh, prefer larger size metals uh, prefer unbridged form uh, terminal carbonyl larger metals like terminal COs uh, and uh, uh, in case of larger metals uh, the CO uh, dif difficult uh, uh, to form and sometimes the present pres presence of metal metal bond cannot uh, be ascertained uh, just by proximity. Metal metal distance uh, is not a proof proof of covalent metal metal interaction and that uh, is just may be a, a constraint put in by bridging carbonyls. And for example, there is no metal metal bond, no Fe Fe bond in Fe 2 CO 9 and this is best uh, uh, described uh, by this bridging carbonyl uh, uh, holding holding this 2 Fe unit and this sort of can be perceived as 2 Fe If you see your units held by three two if units held by this. Uh, three uh, uh, CO bridging ligands. So, these three, three mu 2 C 
CO holds to Fe units together. So, these uh, dicarbonyl distances the Fe 2 CO 9 dimer is held by these 3 bridging carbonyl and here uh, the metal metal distance mm distance does not mean a mm covalent bond. So, this is an interesting uh, 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 observation because in most of the uh, cases a bond can uh, the, uh, bond is ascertained by the uh, the distance or proximity of the distance, but here we find example in particularly in uh, Fe2CO9 where the distance is not a reflection of the presence of a bond, but just an artifact because of the presence of the three bridging carbonyl. Now, as far as the bridging is concerned, the uh, extent of the bridging uh, can also vary. So, what we had seen in the last example is that terminal uh, uh, carbonyl may uh, remain uh, in equilibrium with bridging. So, we had seen that terminal carbonyl uh, uh, remain uh, in equilibrium uh, or with two bridging carbonyls as we had seen. So, we have seen that this is in dynamic equilibrium in the cobalt uh, uh, carbonyl compound and this is terminal. called eta 1 terminal and this is eta 2 bridging. Now, there is a structure which is intermediate between the two and that is called uh, uh, semi bridging and semi bridging structure means that carbonyl is is not uh, halfway through bridging between the uh, two metal center, it is uh, interacting uh, more strongly with one center as opposed to other center. This is semi bridging. Now, these semi bridging systems are of uh, interest and what is uh, what one finds that for Fe CO9 if one replaces uh, two of the uh, carbonyls, uh, if one replaces two of the uh, carbonyls with BP, let us say replaces, uh, replaces uh, uh, COs, two of them with bipyridine ligand and then the complex that would result would have the following structure. would have the following structure where uh, iron is now coordinated 
to bipedin ligand so there are instead of 9 carbonyls there are 7 carbonyls 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and what it happens is under these conditions uh, this carbonyl becomes semi bridged because uh, this iron is seen to interact with the pi star orbital iron is seen to interact with the pi star uh, orbital of uh, this uh, uh, CO oh, leading to the formation leading to this uh, semi bridging carbonyl in this uh, uh, bipyridine complex. So, what really happens is that bipyridine become uh, because of its extremely good sigma donor ability makes iron more uh, electron rich and these two iron center become disproportionately uh, 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 unsymmetrical and some of the electron density of the iron is removed uh, by interaction with the vacant pi star orbital of the CO leading it to bridge under uh, uh, unsymmetrical way in a semi bridging fashion. So, with this let me summarize uh, the developments uh, of today's lecture. What we had done is we have looked at uh, the several kinds of bonding uh, exhibited by metal carbonyl uh, uh, complexes and particularly with respect to terminal and bridging carbonyl. We have looked into situations which will uh, sort of tend to facilitate uh, metal clusters with terminal carbonyl and uh, then the ones where there would be conditions for to see the bridging. The bridging uh, carbonyl can bridge between two centers, it is called doubly bridging. We have also looked at example where uh, carbonyl is bridging between three center that is called uh, triply bridging. And uh, then lastly we have looked into some examples where carbonyl can be uh, semi bridging uh, between uh, uh, two metal centers that is it is more strongly bound to one metal center as opposed to other and that uh, we saw in the latest example where uh, uh, of the two metal uh, sides one is made more electron, uh, electron rich by putting a strong sigma donor ligand like bipyridine as a result the iron center becomes more electron rich and then uh, being more electron rich it siphons off some of the electron density onto the pi star of the bridging carbonyl making the carbonyl uh, uh, unsymmetrical or semi bridging uh, uh, in binding. So, with that uh, uh, I would like to uh, conclude today's uh, lecture uh, that is on transition metal uh, uh, carbonyl complexes uh, and where we have looked into various binding modes of the metal carbonyl kind of uh, clusters uh, uh, that they form. And with that uh, we are going to conclude today's lecture and uh, we are going to look, take up some more of transition metal carbonyl complexes, their reactivity so on and so forth in the next lecture. I thank you for being with me in this lecture and look forward to being with you in the next uh, lecture where we are going to uh, study a bit more uh, uh, details about uh, transition metal carbonyl complexes and some of the other relevant complexes which we will take up in the subsequent uh, lecture. Till then thank you and goodbye.